you know, again, when I talk about him, I don't, I now in retrospect want to make very clear that I understand him now more than I ever did. So when I speak about him, I can speak about him with uh, understanding and, and, it, and it's, all, it's all good now. Uh, it, for some reason, I don't know what happens when someone passes away and it, this is what's come of it, but I've come to have all this love again and understanding for him. And I don't know why it had to take all that to have this happen. It, that upsets me a bit, but. Well, we would like to know whether or not there is a possibility that you are going to marry one day and have children. I would feel that my life is incomplete if I do not, because I adore the family life. I adore children, and I adore that whole thing. And um, I would love to, that's one of my dreams. Who said the word marriage first? I did, he did. I did. When, where? When, on where? The telephone. <clears throat> on the telephone. Oh yeah, telephone? yeah, on the telephone. He first asked me. When? We were dating now for four months, um, right? Four months? I don't remember. Well, anyway, we were spending a lot of time together. I don't know how I didn't manage to get in the press because we weren't hiding it. I was in Las Vegas. We were in we Neverland. Were everywhere. We were everywhere. I went to Atlanta. Bookstores. Atlanta. We were in bookstores. We were not hiding it. And you said re yes right away? I was separated for four months and I said, he said, what would you do if I asked you to marry me? And I said, I would. Um, a big but, I would, though. You were really enthusiastic. Um, <laughs> Because I know that that was very unusual for him. I know he'd had a few dates in his life, but there, there was nothing uh, profound for him in that in that area. And and he 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 fell in love with me, and I and I fell in love with him, and it was very real. How did he ask you to marry him? Um, we were in the library in front of the fire, and he he pulled this giant ten carat diamond out of his pocket and um, put it on my finger. I think he got on his knees as, as well and proposed. And at the time he proposed, did you think that would, it would be forever? I did. I don't, you know, I did. And when I was younger, I can honestly say that um, you can think like that and, and believe that. Mm -hmm. You know, from the outside, it just seems so that, you know, two extraordinarily famous people together, everywhere you went, seemed somewhat like a circus. It was. It's true. But, you know, it, it didn't happen that often we were together a lot and there was no cameras and uh, i think a lot of that was because the, the the promo for history started to come and then we had to appear here and do this mm -hmm. and do that and that was all very manipulated which which i understand comes across as very manipulated mm -hmm. period did you ever feel manipulated in the relationship sometimes but he knew i didn't love that and mm -hmm. he was okay he got it i mean he he would he needed he needed to do his thing i would be there uncomfortably like the MTV mm -hmm. thing and I, his hand was blue after we got off that stage I know he showed me and it was uh, you know completely blue I squeezed it so hard <laughs> I did not want to do that you know it was just it's not in my nature to do that sort of thing so but I understood it as his wife I had you know I needed to do some things like that but see and I always confused that manipulation thinking that that manipulation was that meant that he didn't love me you mm -hmm. know but i understand it better now the manipulation was because it was a survival tactic for him mm -hmm. under a term of a marriage um i'm not going to marry somebody for any reason other than the fact that i fall in love with them period period and they can eat it if they want to think anything different. <laughs> to put it succinct yeah right? what is it you love the most about him oh um what do i love the most about him everything I, he's amazing. I really admire him. I respect him. I admire him. I'm in love with him. And now uh, we don't sleep in separate bedrooms. Thank you very much. And, um, I love everything about him. I honestly can tell you that it was in, it was every sense a normal marriage and everything was spoken. And, you know, in the middle of the night, if he needed to wake up and tell me and, and bounce something off me and wake me up and want to, you know, talk or if there was trouble or, I mean... Was he having was trouble great. sleeping then? Yes, he was like a little gnome. I used to talk, tell him he was like a gnome running around the room mm -hmm. because it was hard for me to sleep. A lot of times I couldn't sleep either if he wasn't sleeping, so he would be, i just hear him piddling and, uh, you know, it mm -hmm. was, 
a bit endearing, mm -hmm. but then, and I, I didn't mind it, but um, he, he did have a, a hard time sleeping, yes. Well, why wouldn't we have a lot in common? That's the question. Why? Why not? Like we're faking this? Like, uh, no, but you can't live with that? somebody day to day. We're together all the time, first of all. Second thing, how can you fake that 24 hours a day with somebody, sleeping with somebody, waking up with somebody, having it's the dinner. dumbest thing He's I've running ever around had. the house, I'm running around the house, you were in our house, we have a normal house, we have a nanny, we have a maid, and we walk around and he's either in the studio, I'm in the kitchen, we're running around like uh, normal, I know it's hard to believe people. You go shopping together, you... We go shopping, we go out to dinner, we argue, sometimes. And about what, <laughs> may I say? <laughs> loved taking care of him it was my it was the highest point of my life one of the very highest points of my life was when things were going really well and he and I were united together and he and I had an understanding about some of the people and things that could go on around him mm -hmm. um, and he was with me on those things and we were we were a unit and I could take care of him and in spite of what some people speculated while I was with him that I wanted a career or that I was trying to do something it was absolute BS. I've yeah. never been comfortable being front and center, honestly. Don't like attention on me. Loved being next to him and taking care of him. I was on such a high doing that that I don't, you know, that, that it was it was a very profound time in my life. So mm -hmm. I it wasn't anything, it was real as far as that goes. Were you angry with him before? I was angry. You were angry with him when you left the marriage? I was very angry. I was so angry because I felt that we had such, we were so united. And then at some point he, he, he pushed me out. Why did the marriage end? Um, there was a very profound point in the marriage when he had to make a decision was it sort of vampires or me? And he pushed me away. Vampires? Meaning people that are sort of spiders, vampires. Um, sick of him sucking his blood. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So you saw that all around him? Oh, God, yes. Yeah. Yes. Michael wasn't a bad person because that's how he functioned. He didn't know any better. It wasn't that, you know, I took it very personally, though. I, I felt I was disposable. When was the last time you spoke to him? Uh, coherently good conversation was in 2005. Um, and I was so removed from him and he could feel it and he could hear it. And I think that's one of the things that killed me in the end too, was that I was very um, distanced and he was checking to get a read. You know, he was trying to throw a line out to see if I would bite emotionally and I wouldn't. I was pretty shut off at that point. And I don't even know how I managed to be like that, but I was. And he was asking me, he wanted to tell me that he, uh, that I was right about a lot of the people around him and that it had panned out to be exactly what he and I had talked about years ago. And he asked if I still loved him. And we went into a whole thing about that and I told him I was indifferent and he didn't like that word. And he cried and he was just trying to find out where I was at and how I could become so detached. And then the final part of the conversation was him uh, telling me that he felt that um, that someone was going to try and kill him to get a hold of his catalog and his his estate. So you still loved him even when you left him? He, very much. I left him to put my to sort of stomp my foot into the ground and go. I, I was trying to take a stand and say, "Come with me. Don't do this." Mm -hmm. And I was a stupid move, because he didn't. And yeah. he was just, you know, he's a stubborn, I'm stubborn, he's stubborn. The two of us, it was like, you know. Michael Jackson, the legendary pop star known by millions of fans around the world, has died. I was in England, um, and I don't know why, but it was the strangest day of my life. I was crying all day. I don't know, and I don't normally do that. And I was, you know, trying to work, and came home and I was literally cutting my food into my dinner crying and um, I wanted to go upstairs and go to bed and just watch something mindless on TV and stop crying. I don't know what is wrong with me. I just can't stop. And, um, and then an hour later the knock came and I, I heard. It was a friend of mine who just and actually I got started getting texts. Are you okay? Are you okay? I said, what's happening? Um, actually John Travolta was one of the first texts I got. Are you alright? 
I said, what's happening? Is this actually happening? It was still unclear, you know. Real honest to goodness shock, not even tears, just, you know. I was floored, honestly floored. The day after Michael died, you said, the person I failed to help is being transferred right now to the L.A. County Coroner's Office for his autopsy. All my indifference and detachment that I worked so hard to achieve over the years has just gone into the bowels of hell, and right now, I am gutted. Gut it. I thought that was an interesting choice of words. That means gutted, empty, dug out, really. Mm -hmm. So did you feel that you had failed to help him? Yes. You went to the private funeral ceremony. What was that like, standing in the room with his casket? Mm -hmm. That was um, really another six months of more to recover from, I think. <laughs> but, you know, I was the last one standing with him. Um, and that was... You what know, do you mean, last one standing? Well, most people had left, and I went back in, and I was alone with him. And I, standing over him, you know, I, I didn't want to leave him. As you stood over his casket, uh, I know it's, you know, it's, it's there's probably nothing more, uh, you know, personal or private uh, than those, those moments. As you stood over that casket, were you able to make peace? Mm. No, I don't think I could make peace then. I think that I more, I wanted to apologize, I more was like... I felt like I wanted to apologize for not being around, you know? Do you think you could have saved him? God, that's such a hard question. Um, naively, I want to say, I know that it's naive to think that I could have, but I wanted to. Could I have? Had I made a call? Had I stopped being so shut off from him? Had I just said, how are you? Can I try to make a phone call, you know, I really did regret that I didn't. Are you going to sing together? No. I would love to sing with you. Mm -mm. Would you like to sing with me? You don't sing? I don't sing. I, I did sing, but that's not why I married Michael. Um, I don't need that. That's ridiculous. If I wanted it, I mean, I'm not going to marry someone for a recording career, just to clear that up as well. Um, what? <laughs> Stop. Because I just can't